glass into smaller pieces, and then about later on we'll get, go over how to fire polish it. So this is a glass tube, and it is far longer than what you would be using in lab. So in order to break glass into smaller pieces, you need the tube itself, a triangular file, and some wet paper towel. So what you do is you lie the glass down on the table, flat so that it's supported, it's not going to break under its own weight or anything. You measure out how long it needs to be according to the directions, and let's say the directions decide, say that it needs to be this long. You mark out that place, put it flat on the table, and then you're going to use this to scratch it in a way that you can break it. So this is a triangular file, so called because of that shape right there, and what you do is you put your finger on one of the ends, so like this flat end right here, so that you can drive this pointed part right here down into the glass and scratch it in a way that will allow it to break the way you want it to, in an intentional way rather than an accidental way. So let's say I want it to break right here. I take this flat, push the finger, use the finger to push it down into the glass and scratch it once. And when I do that, it won't be very deep, and it doesn't need to be very deep. Right there, you can see um, the scratches right there. And that's all it takes. It doesn't need to be much of a scratch. Now, you see the water in here. That's because I washed it out earlier. Um, you want to make sure that the tube you use for this is dry, or you can use heat to dry it out before doing the actual fire polishing. But for this portion right here, it's okay if it's wet, but it just needs to be dry before you fire polish it. So either way, what you do, wrap it in the wet paper towel so that if there's any broken glass that goes flying, it gets caught by the wet paper towel. Have the scratch facing away from you, so the scratch is like right here, my thumbs are on the opposite side of the scratch. Use the thumbs to push outward toward the scratch. One quick little break, and that's all it takes. So this is what the nearly broken piece of glass looks like. You'll notice it's very shiny because it's very, very sharp and not suitable to work with. So this will need to be fire polished and that's what's coming up next. Okay, time to talk about how to fire polish glass tubing. Here's a piece that's quite sharp. Let's see, there we go. Uh, this will cut somebody, so we definitely want to fire polish it in order to make it smooth enough that that's not a problem. So. What you're going to do is you're going to hold one end with one hand steady, or rather use one hand to hold it steady, and the other hand to twist the tube, and this is going to allow for it to rotate inside the flame and get heated evenly. Now let's do the actual fire polishing itself. I'm going to stick the end I want to fire polish into the hottest part of the flame, the bright blue inner cone, and here we go. So that yellowish-orange flame developing is because of the sodium atoms in the chemical structure of the glass. It tells me that the temperature is getting pretty hot and that we're getting close to the temperature where the fire polishing is happening. So I'm rotating the glass to make sure it's evenly heated on all sides. I'll check it occasionally. It's very close. In fact, it's already done. So the fire polishing, if properly done, tends to be a very quick process. You don't you want to be careful not to melt it shut here. Let me get it over here. But you do want to make sure it's smooth, and that's what this definitely is. So I'm going to put it right here, hanging off the edge. You can either hang it off the edge of a tile or hang it off the edge of a sink. Just don't hang just don't put it in anywhere that people are walking by for safety's sake. Um, but that allows it to cool not too quickly and be less likely for the glass to crack. So that's how you um, fire polish the glass. Suppose instead of fire polishing you want to melt it shut. That we can do by following the exact same process. So I stick it into the bright lunar cone, rotate it to ensure even heating on all sides. The only difference is now instead of allowing it to just fire polish, we allow it to go all the way until it melts closed. So that means it needs to be in there longer the amount of time varies considerably depending on all various conditions such as the size of the flame, the intensity of the flame, the size of the glass, the position of the glass, etc. But I've seen it happen in as little as about 45 seconds or in some cases it's taken several minutes. Either way, um, you'll know you're done when you see it melt completely closed. And that means you got to kind of watch it from different angles as you're fire polishing it. Um, the Rotation, the continued rotation is necessary. You'll see, and I'll pull it out so you can see what it looks like when it's done. And it is about there. Yeah, it's there. So let's pull that up so you can see. 
Um, notice the end is smooth, as in like, you'll see the empty space here kind of tapers off to a little point and it doesn't go all the way through to the end. The end is smooth rounded glass. It's a massive glass on top and that tells me that it has successfully sealed. I will, just like the other one, set it here so it can cool. Finally, let me talk about what happens if you have a difficult situation where it doesn't want to close. Sometimes this happens. You're tempted to fire polish. You're on your way to fire polishing it. And maybe that's working. And then let's say you want to close it. And sometimes it'll close, but occasionally it won't. People find that every once in a while they're attempting to melt it shut and it just won't close. So let me show you what you can do in the odd case that you're trying to melt your tube shut and it just won't close. You gotta get it hot all the same. Heat is absolutely required to make any sort of thing happen with this glass. But what happens if it won't close is you gotta go in there with the tongs and keep rotating it. Since I've only got one hand now, I'm just rotating it back and forth like this. I grab the end with the tongs and pull it off as I continue twisting and rotating the glass. So I pull it off and continue to rotate the glass. I can put the junk glass on that tile where it can cool without hurting anything. I continue rotating this because a long stream of glass came off originally and I'm just letting it kind of shrink back down now. And that's done. Now it'll the exact appearance will vary somewhat from example to example, but this is what it looks like when I, at the end of it, you've got that extra bit of glass at the end and it's fine, it's not gonna hurt anything. The important thing is you just want to make sure there's no holes in the bottom, that no, you're not going to have any fluid leaking out. And, and if that's the case, then you're good and set to go. You would, just like any other example, set this off to cool like that, off the edge, uh, hanging over a sink or hanging over the edge like this. Just, again, make absolutely sure it's not hanging off a tabletop, that you don't want it to touch somebody. And that would be how you go about fire polishing and preparing these things for use.